Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on December 19th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here looking at the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun, as we've seen multiple C-class solar flares, but nothing major. And no major plasma filament eruptions only dealing with the coronal hole that was Earth-facing, and that has increased our solar winds. We do have quite the sunspot grouping cresting in. This is the last 48 hours incoming. Pretty bright and fiery regions there, as we have 10 sunspots Earth-facing right now. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing, again, no major plasma filaments. Small one there on the right-hand side, but nothing major. Did create a small CME. Having a look at multi-spectrum, showing the most recent events on our sun the last 48 hours. As we said, we see multiple C-class solar flares still hanging out in the C range. And we did have that northern coronal hole. Now we have the southern coronal hole, Earth-facing. And as I said, that did increase our solar winds up and over 600 kilometers per second. Having a look at 171 angstroms here. Just some amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed here with daily events worldwide. And I want to give everyone a big shout out and a thank you to subscribing to daily events worldwide. Keeping aware and prepared with these daily event videos. Much love and Merry Christmas through the holidays. Stay safe. Stay in love. Because we have 10 sunspot regions right now, Earth facing. Lots going on. Current space weather conditions. We are under a level one geomagnetic storm, and that is from the coronal hole wind stream. Solar winds are coming in at 496 kilometers per second right now. But throughout the day, they were pretty strong. Highest speed recorded was 630 kilometers per second. After that coronal hole impact, that's been happening pretty much since last night. 590 earlier and just about 500 right now. Solar X-ray flux having a look here. As you can see, multiple C-class solar flares the last 48 hours. Solar proton flux coming down from the most recent X-flare. Geomagnetic activity hopping up to a KP6 overnight last night. Let's have a look at our magnetosphere, see how she's holding out. This is showing our solar winds, those dark reds up and over 600 kilometers per second versus the pressure. Now, interestingly enough, yesterday, this was completely red just before the eruption in Iceland and all the pressure was released just before the eruption, just duly noted here with daily events worldwide. Having a look at the Space Weather Prediction Center, this is our space weather spiral. Little green circle is Earth. And we are expecting some space weather here over the next couple days. So heads up. ISWA space prediction spiral showing most recent CMEs taking off in the outgoing fashion. And as well showing the little orange planet, which is Mercury, getting ready for a Mercury retrograde. Just in time for Christmas. Lots of space weather energy coming our way and currently affecting us. Looking at the aurora forecast for the northern hemisphere. Slight chance tonight. Mostly eastern Canada. Other than that, not too much to report. Now let's have a look at Lasco 3. Showing our, our sun's energy taking off. Most recent CMEs. As you can see, nothing major to report. Just some interesting flashes and lots of debris coming our way. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours. As we're sitting at about 200 earthquakes, according to USGS, 
still a very low number. Deepest earthquake past 24 hours was here. 595 kilometer depth, Indonesia, 5.2. And then the largest the last 24 hours was a 5.9 in China, which was pretty devastating, apparently taking over 125 lives and as well multiple landslides throughout the region. It originally came in as a 6.2 earthquake. Activity still prevalent through the Philippines. Notable activity off the coast of Taiwan there. Fiji region today, most recent, 253 kilometer depth, 4.7. Lots of activity around New Caledonia, Vanuatu, 4.4 there. Rat Islands, Alaska, Aleutian Islands, quiet through Hawaii. Get to North American Plate and a notable earthquake here in Segundo, Colorado, 3.8 earthquake. Largest across North American soil. Notable here in Baltonville, Illinois, 3.1. Quiet through the Caribbean plate. Way too quiet for my liking. South American plate, same thing. Pretty quiet, but just recently, 257 kilometer depth, 4.3. Bolivia. Notable there, North Scotia plate, 4.9. And that's the last 24 hours for shakers around the world. We did have a few earthquakes just before the eruption at Iceland. Having a look here at the last seven days for shakers around the world. Again, I take a quick moment and give a shout out to all the memberships. Thank you so much for your support to this channel. It really helps further research and development with these daily updates. So much love and thank you so much. 53 memberships now. Let's see if we can get some more. Really appreciate the love and support. And that is the last of seven days for Shakers. Heads up, pretty deep earthquake today. Now let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery and most recent volcanoes getting updated. We've got Santa Maria in Guatemala. Avalanches being reported in Western Canada. Pacific Northwest and up into British Columbia. Many flood alerts across this right now. It's kind of hard to find the volcanoes. We got Popopoketito in Mexico. Tacono in Indonesia. Sabincaya in Peru. Semeru in Indonesia. Sangay in Ecuador. And of course, Rec James Ridge. Rec James Iceland volcano erupted yesterday, Fuego volcano, and as well Villarica, Marapi, Reventador, and Ubinas in Peru. Lots of volcanoes erupting around the world. 44 now, just put out the report yesterday, and then the Iceland volcano erupted. Looking at satellite imagery, extreme weather ripping across northern parts of Argentina. Overlooking the Pacific Ocean and Australia. Extreme weather breaking out across the Northern Territory as well. All across eastern parts of Australia. And as well, a very large fire that has broken out. And this broke out back on the 15th of December. Having a look at satellite imagery, we're going to show you exactly where and when this started. Let's just go back in time here to the 15th. Right there, you can see that fire started and continued on. And then billows of smoke came out two days later. And then continuing on, it got even bigger. And then a cold front or sorry, a warm front moved through right after that. Now there's lots of moisture and hopefully some relief. Overlooking Africa and Europe. Huge system affecting uh, maritime provinces of Canada. And as well, a northern Africa low hanging around the Mediterranean. And interesting developing low pressure system in the central Atlantic. Having a look here at the SO2 models for North America, Kamchatka, 
Ecuador, Mexico, and New Madrid. Overlooking Southeast Asia, Indonesia. No major developing plumes here. And even over Iceland, North Atlantic, it looks like they have not updated any SO2 models coming from the eruption last night, which is still ongoing. And at one point was releasing over 200 cubic meters per second of magma. And lots of evacuations in place. Now let's get to weather here. Overlooking Europe and Africa, big low systems coming in in the long range. And they will be cold lows. Ex expect some very strong winds with that high pressure ridge coming in off the coast. Most of these systems are staying north. So all across the Mediterranean, high pressure ridge will be prevalent. But then the cold systems start sweeping across parts of northern Europe. Overlooking North America. Long line of moisture stretching from the Caribbean right up into maritime provinces, expecting almost 400 millimeters of rain over the next 48 hours through parts of Newfoundland. Multiple lows moving through this week. Just after Christmas, going to have quite a beast of a system here developing eastern Canada and the United States, and we will be getting some snow from that as you can see a huge low pressure system developing off the west coast. Overlooking Australia, Southeast Asia, no major typhoons or cyclones developing in the long range. But these low pressure systems across Australia continue to race across the land, bringing lots of moisture be interesting to find out what their rain totals are sitting at already for this year. I'm pretty sure it's well above average. Going to leave you here looking at our upper level winds depicting our polar vortex. And right now it's kind of hard to tell where our northern hemisphere is. Or even where or why our equator is where it is. It looks a little low compared to usual and very peculiar circulation happening across the Northern Hemisphere right now. Got a true magnetic north here. And then this is where our North Pole should be. Strange days, folks. Be ready. Lots of big changes coming. We ain't seen nothing yet. Thanks again for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Lots of information shared, so please share. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.